So I thought we should do some problems on Chapter 2 just to highlight the problem-solving um, strategies that we use when we are uh, trying to solve some of the problems that we have encountered in Chapter 2. So I thought we would focus on a couple of problems, each from measurements, significant figures, dimension analysis, and density. Um, so let's get started. Let's start with a very simple problem. This is question 2.23 on page 48. In this case, you're given, you're shown pictures of four rulers with different calibrations, and they're asking you to um, uh, to find the uncertainty of measurement in each of the four rulers. So uh, let's look at the first one. In the first ruler, where um, the calibrations go every one centimeter. So for example, here, one, two, three, four. And if you have a paper clip, as, they, as the picture shows, the paper clip is somewhere right around there. The paper clip goes to there. So the level that we are reading is right there. So in this case, if you were using the ruler that is only calibrated for every one centimeter, how do you record the length of this paper clip? So now, the question you need to ask yourselves is, um, which is the last certain digit? If, if the calibration is the way it is shown, then there is no uncertainty at all with regard to the number two. Two centimeters is absolutely certain. It is shown in the calibration. Um, so that has to be the last certain digit in this particular case, and the next digit has to be the estimated one, the uncertain one. Um, in this particular case, if that's the level to which the paper clip goes, um, I can read it as 2.8 centimeters. Someone else could read the same thing as 2.7 centimeters if they thought, well, the paper clip is around 0.7 and not 0.8 of a centimeter. Someone else could go and say it's 0.9 centimeters. The point, once again, is that the number two is the last certain digit, whereas the first decimal place in this particular case is the uncertain digit. So where does the uncertainty lie in this ruler? The uncertainty in this ruler lies in the first decimal place or the tenths place for this particular ruler. Um, if you go to the next ruler, which is then calibrated not just for, and here my, my drawing skills are very limited, and as you will see very quickly, um, it's not only calibrated for every one centimeter, it is also calibrated for every, okay, I'm trying, for every tenth of a centimeter. So if you look at the paper clip once again, which goes up till... Uh, the paper clip in the previous case was up till somewhere around there. And if this is also calibrated for every tenth of a centimeter, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, we are trying to read this level right here. So my question to you would be in this, for this ruler, is there any uncertainty, is there any ambiguity as far as the number two is concerned? No, there isn't. We know the ruler says so. It is two. And then, is there any ambiguity or any uncertainty as far as the number one, two, three, four, five, six is concerned? So the answer once again is no. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can plainly read it on the ruler. So neither of these two digits in this case are uncertain. They are both certain. And therefore, the next digit we, which we must uh, include will be the estimated or the uncertain digit. And I, I, I could estimate that as, hey, maybe it is 2.65 centimeters. Once again, someone else could call it 6.4 or 6.6 or 6.8. My point once again being that it is the last digit, the estimated digit, which is where the uncertainty lies. So for this ruler, the uncertainty lies in the second decimal place because that's the digit that you would have to um, estimate. <coughs> if you look at the third ruler, which is now calibrated for every 10 centimeters, 
once again now the uncertainty for the third one will be in the ones place so for um, ruler three the uncertainty will be uh, plus or minus well I should have done that over there as well plus or minus one centimeter because uh, the tens digits are certain but the next one the ones will be uncertain so the point in this in in these problems is when you read a uh, instrument that is calibrated you have to very closely see the calibration decide which digits are certain and then the digit following those all the the digit following the last certain digit will be the estimated or the uncertain digit that is where the error will be so that is question 2.23 on page 48 of your textbook uh, let's go to question 2.27 on the same page which uses the same pictures now it's asking us to decide which ruler will be the most appropriate ruler to make the measurements given so for the first problem where the length of the object that you're measuring if you wanted to measure to 20.4 centimeters which ruler a b s one two three or four should you use the strategy here is you need to decide looking at the measurement which is the estimated digit where is the uncertainty the uncertainty will always be in the last reported significant figure in this particular measurement two is a significant figure zero is also a significant figure in this case because it's a confined zero four is significant as well so which of the three digits is the last significant figure the answer is four if four is the last significant figure so then the uncertainty in this case lies in the first decimal place based on the uncertainty that you have come up with then you look at the instruments and decide which one would be the best instrument to use so which of the four rulers allows us uh, to make a measurement so that the uncertainty is in the first decimal place yes the in this particular case we will have to use ruler one because that's the one uh, that gives us the correct extent of uh, correct magnitude of uncertainty um, same logic if you look at example B now we need to make a measurement of 2.3 any guesses as to what which ruler would should we use yes once again ruler one because the uncertainty again is in the first decimal place C 3.74 centimeters now this time the uncertainty is not in the first decimal place but in the second decimal place in other words it's not 0.1 but 0.01 um, is the uncertainty is the error so therefore which ruler of the four would provide us with that degree of accuracy in measurement the answer is ruler two ruler two is the one where the first decimal place is actually a certain digit the second one is the uncertain one um, the answer for D where the measurement is 32 centimeter once again same logic last, uh, last significant figure where the uncertainty lies I'm sorry um, in this case the uncertainty is going to be plus minus one and therefore the ruler that allows us that degree of accuracy will be ruler three oh oh hold on um, for the for answer for a the correct answer should be ruler four because you're measuring 20.4 centimeters so so that's as far as measurements are concerned let's talk about significant figures uh, significant figures please remember all non-zero digits are always significant all leading zeros are never significant confined zeros are always significant and trailing zeros are significant if there is a decimal point in the number in the measurement given 
So let's take a look at problem 2.33 on page 48. And it says, in which of the following pairs of numbers do both members have the same number of significant figures? So if we look at A, 11.01 and 11.00. Now, how many significant figures does A have? That's a non-zero digit, so it's significant, non-zero significant, confined zero significant, non-zero significant. So total number of sig figs are four. In this particular case, non-zero significant, non-zero significant. Now the two zeros in this number are trailing, but because there is a decimal point, these are significant as well, and therefore this number has four significant figures. So here is an example where both of the numbers given in this part have the same number of sig figs. Let's look at the next exam, next part in this problem. It says 2002 and 2020. Now let's once again decide how many sig figs would each of these have. Significant, 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 significant. Yes, yes, yes. No, this is a trailing zero, and since there is no num or decimal point in that number, this trailing zero is not significant. So this has four significant figures, whereas that has only three significant figures. C, um, point zero 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 six six and six six zero 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 zero. Once again. Decide how many sig figs each of those has. The first number has two sig figs because the leading zeros are never significant and the non-zeros are. The second number also has two sig figs because in this case the trailing zeros are not significant as there is no decimal point. So two sig figs, two sig figs, then yes, these two also have same number of sig figs. Can you now, based on this discussion, can you decide if these two numbers, 0 0.05700 and 0 0.05070, if they have the same number of sig figs or not? Yes, they do. Both of them have four sig figs and four here as well because there is a decimal point. So once again, same number of sig figs. Let's go on to the next problem, 2.49, page 49 this time. Uh, it's asking us to carry out a bunch of mathematical operations and to figure out, give the answer in the correct number of significant figures. So. Um, let's just do a couple of those as example to illustrate uh, the process. So let's um, try A, simplest one. So A says 2.0000 times 2.00 times 0 0.0020. If you multiply these numbers together, we get point zero zero eight as in the calculator. That's the calculator answer that we get. Um, I'm going to try it one more time. Okay. Now, we have to now decide how many significant figures this number should have. So once again, go back to the original data given, the numbers given. This one has five sig figs. This has three significant figures, and the last one has only two significant figures. When we multiply or divide measurements, the answer needs to have the fewer number, the fewest number of significant figures as the measurement that has, you know, well, given the measurements that you're using. So given the choice of five, three, or two significant figures, 
we have to make sure that our answer is reported in two significant figures. How many significant figures does it have as of now? You're right. Right now, this is just one significant figure. So we need to rewrite this answer to account for the correct number of significant figures. What would that be? So if you write it as 0 0.0080, then the number will have two significant figures, and therefore it would be correct. Let's now try out the last one, F, 4,670 times 3.00 divided by 2.450. Uh, let's take a minute. Let's um, enter these in our calculators and figure out what the answer needs to be. So my calculator gave me an answer of 5,718.367347. We need to now go back to the answer and decide how many significant figures this number, this answer needs to be reported in. Once again, go back to the original measurements. Three significant figures, three significant figures, four significant figures. So given the choice of those number of significant figures, we need to now rewrite our answer in the less number of significant figures, which would be three. In other words, we need to round off the given the calculated answer right there. We, this eight will be our first digit to be dropped, whereas one will be the last digit that we need to keep. Since 8, the first digit to be dropped, is greater than 5, 1, which is the last digit that we have to keep, is increased by 1. So following the rules for, following the rules for rounding, this number gets rounded off to, oops, sorry, this number gets rounded off to 5,720. In this manner, the reported, the calculated answer now has three significant figures uh, which would be correct for the given measurements. Okay, next question also based on sig figs, 2.53 on page 49 of our textbook. What is the uncertainty in the measured value which is given? The measured value given was 12.5. Three seven zero five zero. Uh, if this is rounded off to the given number of significant figures. So if we needed to round this measurement off to six significant figures, what would this number look like? So if we need to round this off at six significant figures, that means we are rounding it off right there. In other words, in, in six significant figures, this number becomes 12.3705. If that's the case, where is the uncertainty? To answer that question, please remember, uncertainty always lies in the last reported significant figure. In this particular case, since this is the last reported significant figure, the uncertainty lies in that position. B for the same asks us the same question for four significant figures. So if we were to round off the given measurement to four significant figures, then um, the number would become 12.37. This has four significant figures. That's the last reported significant figure. Therefore, the uncertainty lies in the second decimal place. C for the same question does the same thing, but this time for three significant figures. If we correctly rounded, round off this measurement to three significant figures, we get 12.4, which then gives us uh, an uncertainty of point or an error of point 0.1. 
So I hope that helps us understand a little bit more of the whole idea of significant figures and uncertainty in measurements. Let's try out a few problems on dimensional analysis, and I have highlighted a few uh, from our textbook once again. This is question 2.79 on page 50. So the human stomach produces approximately 2,500 mLs of gastric juices per day. What is the volume in liters of gastric juices produced? So we are given, in this case, we are given that the volume of the gastric juices produced daily in human body is 2,500 mL. And um, we are required to convert uh, the same volume into liters. So the unit given is mLs, milliliters, and the unit desired is liters. So how do we go from mLs to liters? The, it, at this point, I would like to remind you that 1,000 mLs make up one liter. That's a relationship, a standard relationship between mLs, milliliters, and liters. So with this information, then we can start setting up our problem. If the given volume is 2,500 mLs, we need to convert this into, oops, sorry, I don't know what I was doing there. Excuse me. We need to convert this into liters. So the unit that we want to get rid of, which is mLs in this case, I will have to put it in the denominator of the conversion factor. And that is, the, that is because then I can cancel that unit out. And the other unit goes in the numerator. One liter equals 1,000 mLs. Here is a conversion factor. In other words, in my calculator, I am dividing 2,500 by 1,000. The answer that comes out is 2.500 liters. Now, significant figures. It is important when you're doing calculations such as these that involve measurements, you have to account for sig figs. Conversion factors will not affect the sig figs of, uh, of the answer. In other words, the number of significant figures in the answer will be determined by the number of significant figures given. Now, how many significant figures does the given measurement have? You're right. It is two significant figures. Right now, the way I have the answer written, this has four significant figures. That is not OK. That is not acceptable. So we need to rewrite our answer such that it has two significant figures as well. So you can write it as 2.5 liters instead of 2.500 liters, and therefore we get an answer which is now in two significant figures. OK, let's go on to the next one. 2.83 on page 50. 2.83 on page 50 says, what volume of water in gallons would be required to fill a 25 ml container? In other words, in this case, we have 25 mLs, and we have to figure out how many gallons of water would be needed to fill this container. So which unit is the given unit? That's the unit that's given. That's the unit that we are required to convert into. Now, how do we go from mLs to gallons? There is no direct way to go from mLs to gallons, but we could go from mLs to liters and then liters to gallons. Please remember, 1,000 mLs make up one liter. And 3.78 five liters make up a gallon. Using this information, we can set up the problem exactly like we did before. So 25 mLs needs to first be converted into liters. 
So ML is at the bottom, crosses out, liters on the top, and then one liter equals 1,000 mLs. After you've done with that conversion, then you are converting liters to gallons. In other words, liters on the bottom this time, because then you can cross it out, and gallons on the top. One gallon makes up 3.785 liters. So the equation is now set up such that all the units are crossed out and we are now left with just the unit of gallons, which is what we need. So let's take a minute and calculate this in our calculators. So you're going to take uh, 25 divided by 1,000, and that answer divided by 3.785. When I do that, I get 0.006605019. Gallons. Finally, we have to account for significant figures. Once again, how many sig figs should I give this answer in? And the answer is two because that's the number of sig figs we started out with. In other words, we need to round this off right there. So the rounded off answer will be 0 0.0066 gallons. Yes, we can write this as a scientific notation as well. And in order to write that as a scientific notation, the number will be 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to minus 3 gallons. Pretty small number, huh? Okay. Now, this problem is not in your textbooks. It's just another problem I got from somewhere. But let's solve it just to see if we get it. If the concentration of sugar solution is two points, so this is the given information, this is what we know, and that's required. We need to convert micrograms per cc into pounds per liter. So a few points before we get started. Number one, how do we relate micrograms to pounds? Not directly, of course. Micrograms will have to be converted to grams, which would then be converted to pounds because 10 raised to 6 micrograms equals 1 gram, and 454 grams equals 1 pound. Number two, we also have to convert cc to pounds. cc, please remember, is cubic centimeter or centimeter cube. Centimeter cube can be converted to mLs, and mLs can be converted into liters. One centimeter cube is equal to one ml, and 1,000 mls equals one liter. So we know we have all the information we need. Now we just need to set things up so that we can get the answer. We want to convert, we need to convert 2.30 times 10 raised to 3 micrograms per centimeter cube. Let's take care of the micrograms first. So micrograms on the bottom, grams on the top, microgram crosses out, one gram equals 10 raised to 6 micrograms. Now we need to go from grams to pounds. Grams crosses out, leaves us with pounds. One pound equals 454 grams. Now let's take care of the centimeter cube. We need to go from centimeter cube to liters. So centimeter cube this time goes on the top, mLs on the bottom, because then you can cross out the centimeter cube. One centimeter cube equals one mL. mLs can be converted into liters. mLs crosses out, 1,000 mLs makes up one liter. And finally, liters to gallons. Oh, we don't have to do gallons here. Sorry. Okay. So there we go. Now when you evaluate, before you start calculating the answer, take a minute, look at your setup, and see what is the net unit, the overall unit that you're left with at this point. Everything is canceled out except pounds on the numerator, liters on the denominator. 
And that's exactly what we need. We need pounds per liter. So that tells us that our setup is correct. Now all you have to do is enter this in your calculators, 2.3, and get the answer. So I get the answer as point zero zero five zero six six zero seven nine three units are at this point pounds per liter. Let's account for significant figures. Since the given measurement had two sig uh, excuse me, three significant figures, our answer also should be in three significant figures. That means I need to round off right there. So if I round it off correctly, this number becomes 0 0.00507 pounds per liter. Yes, we can write it as a scientific note, in scientific notation as well. If you wanted to write it as in a scientific notation, the number would then be 5.07 times 10 raised to minus 3 pounds per liter. Okay. Next, let's do a few problems, a couple of problems on density. The first one that I have picked out is problem 2.91 on page 51 of your textbook. The problem says, gives us the mass of mercury, which is given as 524.5 grams, and it also gives its volume as 38.72 centimeter cube. And the question is asking us to calculate the density. So given information based on and then the required information. So how do we calculate density? For this you need to remember that density is equal to mass divided by volume of a certain substance. In this particular problem we are given the mass of mercury as 524.5 grams. The volume is given as 38.72 centimeter cube. And therefore, if you divide the two, we get, we get 13.5459 7107. What about the units? What would the units of this measurement be? Since you divided mass in grams by volume in centimeter cube, the units will be grams per centimeter cube. What about significant figures? The numerator in this case has four significant figures whereas the denominator also has four significant figures. So our answer, therefore, needs to be in four significant figures, in other words, right there. So if we round this off to four significant figures, the answer becomes 13.55 grams per centimeter cube. So mass divided by volume gives us the density. Let's go on to the next one, problem 93 on page 51 as well. Acetone, um, we are given in this problem, we are given that the density of acetone is 0.791 grams per ml. We are also told that the mass of acetone in the sample is 20.0 grams. In this case, we are asked to calculate the volume. Okay, in order to do that, let's go back to the density formula. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. Let's plug in the numbers that we are given. 0.791 grams per ml equals 20.0 grams over V, V, the volume, 
we do not know yet. So we need to now solve this equation for v. We can do a cross multiplication. If we do that, we get 0.791 grams per ml, ml times v equals 20.0 grams. Now how do we get v from this equation? We can multiply both sides by 0.791 grams per ml. When we do that, we get V equals 20.0 grams, um, sorry, not multiply, divide, divided by 0.791 grams per ml. Grams and grams crosses out, leaves us with the units of mls, and therefore the answer when you divide 20.0 by 0.791 comes out to be 25.2844-5006 grams per ml. Of course it's not done because we have to account for significant figures. Both the given pieces of data, density and mass, were in three significant figures so this number needs to be rounded off right there as well. If you round off to three significant figures, the, den uh, the volume, I'm sorry, I made a mistake there. Uh, the units here are not going to be grams per ml. The units are just mls. Okay, so when you round it off to the correct number of significant figures, the volume becomes 25.3 mls. Let's try question number 95 next, which is also on page 51. In this problem, uh, we are told that the density of homogenized milk, in this case, is given as 1.03 grams per ml. How much does one cup, which is 236 mls, in other words, we are also given volume, 236 mls, of homogenized weigh in grams. So they're asking us to calculate the mass of milk that has the given volume and the density. Going back to the density formula, which is density is equal to mass divided by volume, if you plug in the numbers, gives us 1.03 grams per ml equals mass we do not know, volume is 236 mls. We need to solve for M. We can do a cross multiplication. When you do cross multiplication in this case, we get 1.03 grams per ml multiplied by 236 mls. Please note, mls cross out equals mass. If you do the calculation this time, please note. Now, what is the unit that's left behind? The only unit that's left over after you've crossed out uh, mLs is grams, which is a unit of mass. So that tells us that our problem is set correctly. All we now need to do is multiply 1.03 with 236, and that gives us mass of 243 .08 units being grams. Significant figures. Uh, since, once again, the given data was in three significant figures, we need to give the answer in three sig figs as well. And if you round it off correctly, this will then become 243 grams of milk will have a volume of 236 mLs because the density of milk is 1.03 grams per ml.